Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good afternoon everybody. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Sunday. Um, it's beautiful weather. Uh, but hey, but to be fair, let's, you know, a little bit of um, passion and compassion for those that have uh, been um, harmed by that uh, horrible Helene in uh in the united states okay it's it's big it, we have weather issues that are really um out of control sometimes so my prayers uh, militia man and crews prayers uh, all go out to those that are in need in all emergencies uh whether it's um an earthquake in california or if it's a hurricane in florida or if it's you know uh, an ice storm in New York. I, it's we we do understand that it can be painful. So um, please understand that. Thank you very much. But anyway, listen. Hey, on on a bright bright note, there's some really interesting articles out today and yesterday about Iraq, Iraq and the dinar, and we at Patreon.com forward slash M M A N D C R E W bring you guys a lot of information. And uh, I highly suggest that if you want quality information, you, you come into the room, into our Patreon forum, and you'll, and you'll have it at your fingertips, okay? We do have a Discord chat room that is uh, very vibrant. Uh, Samson, our uh, news, news uh, professional, or the news hound that she's been called over the years, brings in information literally daily. And we go over it, I go over it, and uh, you can go over it and you can make your own decisions and you can get the analysis of, of my opinions because that's what they are, their opinions. You can get the analysis of the crew's opinions like Pompey Peter. We have a, um, a sit rep that, uh, we put out within the last 24 hours that is his views and it, it's an audio. You can find that in Patreon. Uh, it's um, well received. It, it's, it's great. So come in and check that out. And then also we have add-ons that are uh, with the, um, for instance, we have XRP uh, information, uh, which is a crypto, uh, you know, technology, and uh, Ripple's part of that. So obviously we just have some information, and that's a learning experience for all of us. Uh, I am not a professional. I'm not a guru on or anything like that. I just we bring in the information, and and you can read up on it. And, and you can get other people's opinions, uh, but uh, we don't offer professional advice on investing or anything to that effect, but uh, we just give you some um, information, good quality information, we believe. So anyway, this article is interesting. It's a long report. Um, it is in uh, patreon.com at Militia Men and Crew, and you're gonna find that it says, supporting the Iraqi ec economy, the government takes a series of decisions and procedures to activate the role of the private sector. The headline alone it should tell you that what are they doing? It's they're talking about activating the private sector. That means they're, the private sector is is different because you know remember Iraq has always been an oil rent, if you will, economy, not a market economy. And so what they've done is they've went from um, they're going from that rentier source to uh, non-oil revenue streams. And so they're doing that as the private sector. So the private sector is going to come in and take partnerships in all the, in either banking, um, in the reconstruction of the country, all, all the different things you can imagine. Uh, private sector dealing with electricity and energy, water, agriculture, all of it. Okay, so here it says the supporting the private sector and creating jobs, job opportunities are priorities confirmed by the government of uh, Prime Minister Muhammad Shia al Sadani, and there's plans to invest this role uh, in the sectors uh, in diversifying the economy, reducing dependence on oil, and contributing to creating sustainable development. And if you guys look into what sustainable development's about, you're going to find that you're going to see names like the IMF, International Monetary Fund, the Bank of International Settlements, the BIS. You're going to see the World Bank. You're going to see the WTO, the World Trade Organization. They all talk about sustainable development. And that's what Iraq needs to do is they're going to diversify from what? Oil. They're going to add in all the things that we have been talking about. So keep that in mind when you read this, and you should, you should definitely come in and read it. 
it, uh, this next paragraph basically says this trend was supported by unprecedented government decisions. So the Iraq has made unprecedented decisions and they started this back when? In January of 2023. This whole article, five pages of data, talks about the progress of what they've done, not what they're going to do, what they've already done. Okay, as well as the inclusion of the private sector and implementation of new residential city projects is one of them. Uh, they're talking about sovereign guarantees, sovereign guarantees. So in other words, it's almost like a win-win situation for investors. The environment is, is wonderful investors. So if you, any of you out there want to be an investor in Iraq and you have uh, what it takes, I would suggest you pick up the phone and get a hold of your Chamber of Commerce, International Chamber of Commerce or the United States Chamber of Commerce and see what they have to offer because they have sovereign guarantees. It says the private sector in the triennial, triennial budget, which is a tripartite budget, is to support the establishment of laboratories, factories, establishment of agriculture projects, put forward a new vision to grant the private sector uh, to achieve. They're, gonna, they're doing this to help others achieve reform efforts and their own efforts and to activate laws that are enforced to take care of who? Workers in the private sector. And they go on to say April 7th, for instance, up to 2024, this says April 7th, they uh, did an approval of issuance of investment and partnership instructions, instructions between the public and private sectors for the year 2024. So they've done that already. Based on the provisions of the constitution, the federal budget law of the Republic, of what the three fiscal years we know that they've done that that's beautiful it says here what they're doing is they've made several decisions to do what support the private industrial sector so they're not just talking about the commercial side they're talking about industrial sector what is that going to be like steel phosphates um sulfur all those things minerals everything you guys and this point, here's my birthday, July 23rd, for instance, uh, in 2023, that they talked about the framework of developing and supporting the national industry. They're talking about dry gas committee for investment for projects, the commitment of the Ministry of Oil to allocate and equip new industrial projects, plan to establish the partnership between the, what? The government and the private sector. Okay, who's involved? Ministry of Industry, Ministry of Minerals, what are they talking about? Dry gas. So next thing is they're talking about the framework of the government's vision of economic reform in revitalizing the investment and development movement in the country. The Council of Ministers pr approved them in August 2023 uh, the national strategy for bank lending. So they're talking about the banking sector. What else? Attracting local and foreign investors to increase what? Credit. Granted to it from what? Non-oil revenue streams. GDP. Out to when? 2029. 2029. They're, they're forecasting. It sounds like, it sounds here in, in back, in, again in July, they're launching a new industrial initiative to promote the sectors. And they are talking about um, many industrial sectors. So it didn't quite... Um, go into isolation of any specific one, but it says here the Iraqi DR company, private sector, the Saudi Northern Cement Industry. So there's another sector, the private sector's partnerships in the field of cement is going to be really big, you guys. I mean, think about all the concrete they're going to use for all the foundations for the new buildings, the industrial cities, the residential complexes. You see where they see what they've been doing. They set the stage. This this was over. This is last year, 2023, not 2024. And 24 is almost over. Okay, so it says here that during this visit, in this particular case, back in April 2024, the Prime Minister decided, decided to involve a delegation from the private sector and Iraqi businesswomen and businessmen in visiting delegations. The, during the visit, the Prime Minister also sponsored the signing of uh, similar memorandums of understanding between the Iraqi private sector and the American companies in the fields of energy and pharmaceutical industries. That was back in April of 2024. So, as you can see, where, where are we now? They put this, this article out just today, you guys, or yesterday, I'm sorry. July 20th, the Prime Minister opened four factories 
for the Military Industrialization Authority. This is for Iraq. This isn't for us, you guys. Including the electric vehicle production factory at the General War Industries Company. Okay. Partnership with who? Private sector. And then, I mean, it goes on. It goes on and on, everybody. And um, they're talking about other countries. Egypt, for instance. Jordan. Iraqi Jordanian. It, they're all having... Look, these guys, everybody knows that Iraq is going to be the financial, um, well, it said back in September of 2023, around this time frame, that Iraq was going to be the, effectively the savior of the, you know, international financial system is going to provide, uh, bring what? Confidence to the financial system and the largest banks in the world. Okay. This, and so what, what have they done? They've been working on this to do what they said they were going to do. The Ministry of Transport signed... September uh, 3rd, 2023, an agreement with the International Financial Corporation, which is what related to, um, I think that's the World Bank, you guys, <laughs> to rehabilitate and develop Baghdad International Airport. The International Finance Corporation included consulting with development of the role of the private sector in enhancing its entry into the public services arena, partnership with the public sector and sectors facing future challenges. Look, the list of accomplishments under Al Sadani and his teams is nothing but stellar. They've been hard at work at setting the stage for international cooperation and coordination with the private sector, as you guys, I just spelled it out pretty blatantly. It looks like the foundation is now in place and will be holding and will be a strong footing for Iraq to start on. So let's look forward to seeing um, this. Uh, real effective exchange rate that will have to be uh, applied at some point in time uh, here in the near future to uh, make sure that this gets uh, that that footing is indefinitely in cement so digital banks digital transformation here's the article the next phase of digital transformation in the Egyptian sector I just mentioned Egypt it says with steady steps the central bank continues to impl implement the banking Reform strategy, one of the main objectives is which to achieve digital transformation in the banking sector. This dates back to as early as they, they started this process in 2017. It says, it, which included the first, second, and third stages that far back, right? So during the past two years, al Sudani has been in office, right? Uh, cooperation between the government with the personal support and follow-up of the Prime Minister and the Central Bank was a fundamental step to activate and accelerate the digital transformation in the government trans and a transition from a cash economy to a digital economy. They go on to say that the developing information technology by developing information technology, establishing digital banks, using artificial intelligence in the banking services, and using modern technologies and loans, compliance, risk management, combating money laundering, terrorist financing, and com combating uh, banking fraud. All of those things. What are they doing? Well, they, they did. The results during 2023-2024 recorded what they call a qualitative leap in the volume of transactions and electronic payment operations and the use of modern banking technologies. The banking reform now entered a new phase of transformation to the digital banks, right? The central bank is currently examining auditing about 70 requests to license new digital banks according to the precise controls and conditions adopted by the central bank. It says this constitutes a real and promising start for technical banking development in Iraq, bridging the gap of other countries of the world in this field. This facilitates the provision of smart banking services, reduces the chances of fraud and corruption, and provides important uh, data on the nature of those transactions, their control, and compliance. You ask yourself, well, doesn't that sound like the blockchain is about ready to just uh, turn on? Well, anyway... We're going to find out. It says, therefore, digital banks are in an, uh, a new stage of digital transformation and banking reform. And it, they hope that the central bank will soon take the first step by licensing digital banks that show through examination, audit, study, that they are committed to the applicable, applicable controls and conditions. So if they pull that off, guess what? They're probably going to have 
to be the, the ability to do transfers, electronic transfers. Okay, you guys are going to see some exciting news this evening because there are some electronic transfers that they're talking about. You know, the Iraqi citizens um, have been patient, they've been waiting, and they're, they have been expectant. So anyway, it says similar, this article is um, similar to 2014. It says, will Iraq resort to reducing expenditures to cover the budget deficit? Okay, this article is from an advisor, Muhammad Muhammad. Uh, Mahar, excuse me, Mahar Mohammed Saleh. He's the advisor to the Prime Minister Shia, uh, Shia al Sudani. And today, on October 5th, which is actually yesterday, on the possibility of the government resorting to reducing expenditures in order to cover the budget deficit and the lack of liquidity. So the article just basically goes on and just says um, Saleh points out that there's a government hedge according to the law number 13 of the budget and this law hedges against an economic crisis but the deficit is hypothetical so the hypothetical obviously is not real and it does not necessarily happen but it gives flexibility to the financial liquidity that's the key there in securing assumptions or things to confront external clashes or crises that may occur here and there it says the Iraqi general budget tables for the year 2024 faced objections and controversy due to the reduction of the investment budget for the 15 governments that do not belong to the region after the federal government approved them. In when? June of last year. So they're just flat out telling you that they had this approved, that it was done already. Parliament approved the country's draft general budget for the three years, 2023 through 2025, and they give you the amount of money that they did this, okay? So obviously, they have it in place, and what we haven't seen yet is the exposure of that 2024 budget on the investment side. And you know that in what we've read in past time and today a little bit, they talk about the 2024 budget. And they're going to be doing what? They're going into the international world with who? The private sector. How are you going to do that without having your budget? They haven't exposed it yet. When are they going to do that? My understanding is in of how they do things is that they have been um, working to that effect. And they have to have probably everything in order for them to be able to, at, <laughs> at a very uh, critical time, do that and show it. And they are showing us that based off this, some of this information and all we've had for the last few weeks, talking about the delete the zeros, talking about all those different items um, and going international, um, you can see that this is probably what they're talking about now because they're talking about the 23, 24, 25 budget right there. And they're talking about, um, they're talking about digital transformation. They're talking about projects. And what else are they trying to tell us? They're, they're telling us that they're going to pay salaries and such. And then what are they going to do? They're going to do it on electronic cards, are they not? I'm pretty sure we're going to find out that they are. It says, why have the salaries of the region employees not been localized yet? Now, when they say localized, what does that mean? That tells you a story. It means that the federal government is going to pay the Kurdistan region's portion of what they deserve to the citizens directly away from the Kurdistan hands. In other words, it's going to go from the federal government to the people. Not only in Baghdad, in provinces, but all provinces around the world, all salaries, if they're government oriented, they're going to get paid. That's how they're going to do it. Why? Didn't you read there was 40 million cards issued? We, we knew about that and it was in print a month or two ago. And now they, they reiterated it. Okay, so it's not brand new. Okay, so it says the framework parties are preparing for the upcoming parliamentary elections in 2025. And they're, who are they? I think they're talking about the Kurds, but I think they're having an election on the 20th of this, this month. But we'll see. It says a new alliance to form the next government with the main ruling Kurdish parties. And they're distancing themselves from the problems of the region's employees' salaries. So as to not clash with those parties in the region. It says the main reason for the Kurdistan regional government not localizing the salaries of the region's employees is the fear of the main parties in the region that employees in civil, military, and security institutions will be released from the grip of these parties 
and the people's lack of interest in these parties after their source of livelihood was liberated by localizing their salaries directly from the Iraqi state. So in other words, all of a sudden, uh, there could be a shift in the thought process uh, since you're not holding me hostage with my my salaries, the government of Baghdad effectively is going to have control of my my money. Um, they may not be so open to be voting for certain parties. That's what they're telling you. It's <laughs> that is fascinating, you guys. So up there in the Kurdistan region, I don't know what party you're in, but if you if you've been um, not doing things properly, you might find yourself in a, in a different light. Okay. It says here, there are major objections and problems regarding the issues of localizing salaries for the Kurdistan region's employees, possibility of the regional government uh, intervening and benefiting from it. That's what I just said, especially with the recent clarification issued by the federal Supreme Court. Now that you guys should have your attention, especially with the recent clarification issued by the federal Supreme Court, which confirmed that its decision regarding the localization includes all banks licensed by the central bank operating in the Kurdistan region. So they've been put on notice. And basically, as far as my view is concerned, the Kurds better get ready uh, in taking care of the citizens and fairly from here on out or they will not likely fare very well politically. It's time to truly be about the people and not lying in the politicians' pockets is what I believe. The localization of salaries in the hands of the federal government in the unified treasury account on their national cards will be very effective in leveling the playing field. And it should, it really should. Accurate accounting of, of who gets paid will be very telling and likely very different than from the past. So in other words, all those tens of thousands of people that were supposedly real aren't real. Well, that's going to be an exposed issue. I wouldn't be surprised if people got some, had some problems over that and at the, at the highest levels. So anyway, all these ghost employees will probably clearly show that how much graft, how much has been stolen from these people from in power. So uh, if I'm wrong, I mean, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying if I'm wrong, uh, good on them. But if I'm right, whew, I would not want to be in their shoes. Okay, so the next article is fascinating too. Is Kurdistan's finance announces the deposit of salaries in Suleimania employees in their accounts. And this is today. This was hours ago. This is fascinating. Ministry of Finance and Economy of the Kurdistan region and government announced on Sunday the deposit of the salaries of some Suleimania employees in their bank accounts. A statement from the ministry seen by the news explains that many employees received SMS messages stating that their salaries had become available, enabling them to withdraw them from the ATMs. Holy cow, sit back and think about that for a minute. So all of a sudden you're sitting at your phone, you're having a, you're having a Kool-Aid and uh, in, in a hot summer afternoon, fall afternoon, and all of a sudden your text message goes off and it says, hey, you got money. <laughs> yeah. It's not, you got mail, but you've got money in, as a text message. And so it could have instructions, and probably does, have instructions of how, when, and how much money you have. Okay, so that's a fascinating. The statement stressed the importance of this step in facilitating the disbursement of salaries, especially in light of the financial challenges facing the, the region. And yes, they have some financial challenges because if they've been stealing money and they haven't been paying people on time and now they're going to get it on time, they're going to be like, whoa, it's not going to look good. It won't be pretty. Okay, so anyway, this comes after periods of uh, delays in payroll, which have been alarmed uh, in, which did and have alarmed the employees in the region. So, okay, so they're going electronic. That's takeaway. SMS text, text, text messages are telling people that their salaries can be accessed where? At ATM machines. They can withdraw money from the ATM machines. Are they going to have the same exchange rate now it's that it, it's electronically being taken care of? That's what we're looking for. We're going to find out. They didn't say they paid them and to, they have it ready for disbursement, but they haven't said they cleared the money yet. So we're going to be, uh, be patient, be optimistic, but yet be guarded. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll see how this turns out. And I think it's going to be powerful.
Uh, the Ministry of Finance discloses the opinion of board, the development of financial performance and confirms the implementation of the recommendations of the Council of Ministers. That's the headline of that this particular wrote, uh, report. Excuse me. A statement from the Ministry of Finance as received by the news networks. Uh, the Ministry of Finance discusses with the opinion board the development of the financial performance and confirms the implementation of the recommendations of the Council of Ministers. So they have an opinion board um, basically on development and performance and that it's being confirmed that there's an implementation of the recommendations of the Council of Ministers. So they've done something. Who's involved in that? Well, the Ministry of Finance. Who's she? Ms. Tave Sammy. She chaired a meeting Sunday, today, okay, on this board. The meeting addressed the emphasis on implementing the recommendations of the Council of Ministers and the emphasis on continuing the tireless efforts and the providing the capabilities within the framework and implementing financial and strategic plans, including what? Automation, digital transformation, the use of modern electronic systems, and improving the reality of the work to provide optimal services to citizens. So in my view, what are they doing? They're clearly letting us know that they're implementing the recommendations of the Council of Ministers. They're telling the citizens they're providing the capabilities with the government's framework to develop the, finan the financial performance that they were talking about. Also what? Implementing financial and strategic plans, including automation, digital, the digital transformation of, of what? They're using modern electronic systems. Does that sound like they've got something new here now? Something new, modern? Could that be the electronic payments that are going to be digitized, which are going to be part of a new, real, effective exchange rate? Yes, yeah, so just as they sent those text messages to the citizens, uh, informing them electronically, it's they are that they have paid the salaries. Now the question is going to be, um, when do those electronic payments clear? Okay, digital clearing can be pretty fast. So do they have time frame on it? Is, it? is it set for today? Is it set for tomorrow? Is it set for Tuesday or Wednesday? We're gonna have to find out, but the people should know about that. I wouldn't be surprised if Facebook, social media starts blowing up tonight, tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Let's see what happens. Uh, are we going to hear from Al Alok? Are we going to hear from Al Sudani about that 2024 budget? Are we going to are we going to talk about what what did the Supreme Court said? The Supreme Court was just mentioned here tonight. What did they say? What 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 is it that everybody's waiting for? Was there an action taken by the Supreme Court because they invoked it in one of these articles? I would suggest that it's possible that they have. Um, they don't always tell you everything. They obviously have the Ministry of Judiciary is missing 4782 still. Well, at least as of yesterday, um, best, to the best of my knowledge. Um, why? Is that, is that the real effective exchange rate that they're dealing with? Is that something that's in there that's allowing them to now obviously now send out text messages? We've completed something. Isn't that what it looks like? It sure does. It looks great to me. So let's see if I'm right or let's see if my... You know, my view is exposing like, wow, there is more to the story, okay? We have been watching this unfold. We have been in this study with Militiaman and crew, okay? We have been doing um, our diligence with the news articles. We haven't been making the stuff up. We've been showing the data, and let's see if it turns out. But this really looks sweet, everybody. I think what a weekend, what a Sunday, beautiful day. Going into next week, let's see what they show us. Let's see. Let's see if Al Alok and Al Sudani, Tave Sammy, Ministerial Council of Economics, uh, breaks out with some, just some, <laughs> what we've been waiting for. Let's see what happens, you guys. So hey, listen. By the way, if you guys hit my like, hit that subscribe. Um, I do appreciate that, and thank you so much for all of your guys' donations. Everything helps. All of it does, and has truly helped keep. Uh, Samson, uh, Gigi, all of us working and uh, helping you help us. That's the main thing. So thank you very much and I appreciate it. And uh, we have Zelle, PayPal, and Venmo. So um, much appreciated, everybody. 
Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content, subscribe to the channel, or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.